Hello, welcome to Special Fit. My name is Mike Ramirez, and today what we're going to be talking about is teaching tips. So, when we're teaching movement, we need to know the mechanics. We need to know what the game plan is for every type of movement that we're doing. So, whether it's a squat, a press, a push, a pull, we need to know the mechanics and what the common mistakes or faults are in those things. But sometimes we need to, in order to correct those things, we need to apply some sort of cue or a prompt to be able to teach the student those mechanics. So um, we use basically three types of cues. The first one being a physical cue. This could be anything from a light touch could be a light tap on the leg or a tap on the shoulder or it can even be a directional where I have to pass the student to move the body part until they touch my hand or something like that. So this can be light to heavy, pretty much any cue can go in that direction. Next is that we're going to use a visual cue. This could be anything from modeling to using some sort of visual that maybe we draw on the ground. So sometimes we, for foot positioning and things like that, we can draw feet on the ground using chalk, or we can use some sort of foot marker or some other type of visual to show them. Um, also drawing things on the board and showing them the positioning, we can also use that. Um, next, we're gonna talk about verbal. This could be things like you know, just a verbal direction. Um, it could actually be telling them what to do or hinting towards what you want them to do. Um, the most basic cue that we give is by verbally telling them what we want their body part to do. So if we say something like chest up or knees out, it's a very simple directional cue where we're wanting to show them what, tell them what the body part is and which direction we want it to move. So these are basic three cues that we use. So when we're using these types of cues, um, there's a pretty common method that's used in intervention that works really well, but we just have to adapt it to the fitness uh, component just because um, we're moving the body. So we're having to work with the body and the brain together. And so the first concept that we wanna look at is from layering these cues from least to most. So when we're doing this type of cueing, basically what we're looking for is to try to increase learning. So basically we're increasing learning here. And the reason this happens is because we're attempting to try a cue, for instance, we can try in the beginning to go with the least invasive cue and say, hey, move, uh, move your knees out. Let's say that's the most uh, basic cue or just telling the student to do something like, I want you to squat up and down or sit and stand. But if they don't respond, I'm gonna have to layer on something else and I might say, hey, it looks like this. And then if there's no response there, they might need some sort of physical response or assistance to help them do that movement. Or it might be a, a light touch to initiate the movement. So we've layered on three cues on top, starting with the least invasive or the least amount, meaning one cue, and then increasing by layering on the cues. And this increases the learning of the individual to get what you're trying to accomplish in the skill. The opposite of that would be most to least. So in here, what we're trying to increase is independence. So here, we may start with a lot of cues where we're giving them support and getting a rhythm of doing things, creating a lot of repetitions. And as we start to gain that independence, we will remove layers and layers of cues so you might start off with you know a verbal visual and a physical cue and try to get the student to perform the movement and as he starts to show competence and 
rhythm to be able to produce it over and over, we may fade and go to more natural cues that maybe they're not even any instructions particular to the movement, but more so to just kind of stay in rhythm by counting the reps um, or just giving them some praise for the way they're moving and they'll continue to do that without needing any cues at all. Um, the last thing is that we also employ um, rhythm and pacing cues. And the reason why we do this is that a lot of times our students produce involuntary movements or uh, involuntary vocalizations and things like that. Their aberrant behavior is something that we could take advantage of to get them to move. So let's say somebody has some sort of like tick where they move their arms or they do some sort of repetitive movement or maybe they like to pace around or whatever that might be. So what we would do in this, um, this is a reference to Dr. Arnold Miller, is that we would be creating a system surrounding whatever that aberrant behavior might be. So a lot of times we have these compulsions or we have these um, obsessions and so we want to try to create some sort of system to turn that behavior into something more functional, functional or meaningful. So to give you an example, let's say the student has an obsession that, you know, they pace around and they're maybe producing some sort of vocalizations that um, they're kind of living in a closed way. And so to bring them out of that, we need to create some sort of system and to create an interruption of that system. So maybe we have like a sled and that sled has a peg and then the straps of the sled would be here. And as this student is pacing around, what I can do is I can grab a bunch of weight plates and scatter them around the room, let's just say. Then what I can do is I can get a stack of those plates and hold them in my hand. And as that student's pacing, I'm gonna to try to interrupt their closed system by handing them a weight plate. Or maybe I might start stacking them around myself and try to draw their attention. From there, I might hand one to them or place it on their chest or touch them with it in some way to interrupt their closed system and ask them to put one of them on here. And as they do that, I'm ready for the next one and then we'll add another one. And then we start creating this system and it's an aberrant kind of behavior. It's a repetitive thing. And I've gotten them from their system into my system. So basically that's establishing the system. From there, we try to turn it into integrative system, which means that there's gonna be an interaction here. So once we get to the end of what I have in my hand, I might point and show them where that other plate is and have them move. So that's where the pacing and architecture of the system, proximity, getting them to travel and move and create distance and try to lengthen the system, trying to expand the system. So once they pick this one up and place it here, I'm gonna to point to another one that's further away, place it here, and as they start to go in there, and once we get rid of all those plates and we stack them on here, then we make that attempt for them to put it on and maybe go for a sled run or something like that. So it's a good way to kind of use some rhythm um, by either using your words, how you hand the plates to them. So it could be something where it's like, you know, take this, put it on, take this, put it on, take this, put it on. You're creating, you're using their way of, of living and, and their behaviors to then move them into a functional uh, type of behavior. So these are just some examples of the different cues that we use. And uh, so f feel free to send us any questions about that because there's a lot of variations, a lot of ways to use these different types of cues. Um, the one thing I want to leave you with is to make sure that when you're using these cues that you're really trying to appeal to the strength of the way the student learns. We all have a way of, that we prefer to learn. So in the beginning, make sure that you're appealing to that strength. So if that person's a very visual learner, you kind of want to start there, but you also want to try to strengthen their other ways of learning as well. So if somebody's very tactically defensive, later on you're gonna need to support them as they get stronger and they're moving heavier weight. 
So you want to be able to introduce that at some point as well. So we want to be able to have access to all types of cues, but in the beginning we want to start with their preferred way of learning and then try to expand their world to other cues. That's our uh, teaching tip for today. Hope you enjoyed. Don't forget to subscribe to our YouTube channel. Thanks for watching.